Hey, I'm Matthew from Everyam. If you haven't been paying attention to the solar market lately, Tesla's been giving some really good deals on four kilowatt 12 panel systems for about $6,000. It's way less than what other companies charge, and they're probably even losing money on some of these installations that don't go perfectly. But you may have seen some headlines lately that Elon announced in a recent tweet storm that they're making some pretty big changes to Tesla Solar. They're increasing the cost by about $8,000 at least by requiring a power wall with every solar installation. And that's kind of going to wipe out the financial benefits of solar for a lot of people. On the surface, this kind of sounds like a money grab by Tesla to try to sell more power walls. But I think there's more to it than that. They've already delayed and delayed the release of the semi precisely because they don't have enough batteries for it. So why would they force power walls on people to sell more batteries when they already have ways to sell those batteries? It just doesn't add up. Raising solar prices is also counter to their stated mission of accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy. So why would they do this? I'm a current Tesla solar and power wall owner. I'm a professional electrical engineer and I've worked for two electric utilities. So I know a bit about this world. I also consulted with my friend Yvonne who works in the solar business. So if you guys have a lot of questions about this, she and I could come back for a follow-up video to try to answer those questions. So overall, I've been thinking a lot about this and I think I know why they're doing it, even if it may be a little premature. But if Tesla is anything, it's forward thinking. So maybe they know what they're doing. So bear with me, this is a complicated subject. I'm gonna to try to distill it down and I'm gonna make some generalizations. And of course there will be exceptions to those that I'm sure you guys will love to point out in the comments. A lot of this varies by location and utility also. So I'm primarily gonna talk about the way things are in California. Your area may vary. So here's Elon's tweet where I've seen a lot of focus on the first part about forcing power walls on customers, but not so much on the second part where he says solar will feed exclusively to power wall. And I think that's really the key to understanding what's going on here. The way things work currently is that we have three modes we can select for solar and power wall with backup only, solar self consumption, and advanced time of use. In all three of these modes, the solar charges the power wall first and then anything you don't use in the house goes back out onto the grid. What Elon's saying in this tweet is that solar will no longer export back onto the grid in any of these modes if you have Tesla solar. And this is a big change from the way solar has worked. Like Elon said, this will simplify installation when you don't have to get approval from the utility to do it. But these systems are gonna be in place for 25 or more years. And that's just a one-time upfront thing. So there has to be more to it than that. So think about what happens when we export power onto the grid. The grid isn't a big battery that you can just push energy to and then you can take it back out of it at night. It's a balancing act. You have producers and you have consumers and they have to be in balance all the time or else you lose stability of the grid. Frequency can go up or frequency can go down and you can have blackouts. So when we export solar, it causes the grid frequency to increase very slightly, but somewhere on the other end of the grid, there's a producer that sees that slight increase and they lower output to bring it back into balance. But you don't have to take my word for that. In California, we actually have a website you can go to and you can see that. It's at caiso.com. So let's take a look. So here's what's going on with the California grid right now. Renewables are currently serving 87% of the load. And when I checked it earlier today, it was 90%. If we look a little closer here, you can see our demand curve, you can see the net demand. So this is demand minus what's coming in from renewables. And then we can go over here to supply. So we have 16,000 megawatts of renewables and almost 10,000 of that is coming from solar. And we can see this trend that's going on. You can see where as solar ramped up, we had the natural gas here in orange ramped down. We have imports ramping down to compensate. Have hydro 
that's kind of ramping up and down. We have nuclear that's just holding steady. We have a minuscule amount of coal. And then we have batteries. And look at the difference between this battery graph and the solar graph here. It is a huge discrepancy. At most, batteries charging is minus 223, have some minus 253, where solar at the same time is up in this 10,000 range. I mean, it's an order of magnitude difference between how much battery we have and how much solar we have on the grid. If we look right here, starting at about 9.30, our import line even went negative. So it's trending down, trending down till almost 3,000. So that means California is a net exporter of energy during this time, which yay California, right? We have all these renewables coming in, we're sending them to other utilities. Well, that's not necessarily the case. At best, we're buying this electricity from solar producers at the retail rate, and we're selling it on the market at the wholesale rate. So we're losing money on that electricity as a whole. But in some conditions, we actually even have to pay utilities to take that. It just depends on what the market rate at the, is at that time and whether or not they need that energy. Another thing that ends up happening during these times, so the grid, they've already put all the generators at minimum levels. They're exporting whatever energy they can, but they still have more than they can use. So they end up having to curtail solar and wind. If we scroll down, we can see those reports, wind and solar curtailment report. So come in here to May, and we only have yesterday, but you can see for yourself when we get into these situations, they're even turning solar and wind off. So not only are the utilities having to buy energy from us at higher rates than they're able to sell it to other utilities, we also have these situations where sometimes they're paying utilities to take that energy, or at a minimum, they're having to ramp power plants down. So think about what happens when you do that. That power plant had construction costs, it has ongoing maintenance costs, it has employee costs and fuel costs. And the only one of those that goes down when you ramp the output is those fuel costs. And that's just a minimal part of it. So overall, what ends up happening is the cost of electricity is increased for everyone on the grid. Not that we don't wanna do this. Of course, we wanna switch over to renewable energy, but it does cost more to do that, and this is why. Most utilities have some form of a net energy metering agreement with its customers. That sometimes you see it as NEM, NEM1, NEM2. We're currently heading into the successor to NEM2 in California right now. What that means is that the utility is obligated to buy our solar and they give us the retail rate for it. Which for me on my current rate plan, it's over 50 cents a kilowatt hour during the day during peak time. So they're buying it from me at 50 cents a kilowatt hour. And then they're in this case, having to ramp plants down and try to export it for a much lower rate than that in a lot of cases. This retail rate offset has been a huge reason why solar has been successful in California. And it's what makes it such a good financial investment for a lot of people. I mean, you can see people who get solar, especially at some of these prices that Tesla is currently charging, and the payback on it is like five years. And then you have another 20 years plus after that of free electricity you don't have to pay for. It has been an awesome situation for quite a long time in California. So changing this would change those financials for a lot of people, and that gets people really concerned. So take a look at my current setup, for example. My rate plan has the highest rates between 2 and 9 p.m. in the summer on weekdays. So I have my Powerwall configured so that it charges in the morning 
and at 2 p.m. it takes over operating the house. That means every bit of solar that I make from 2 to 9 p.m. goes right back out on the grid. So this big peak that we're seeing in solar and that big dip in energy production, that's me. I am contributing to that 100%. And then in the evenings and at night, whenever my rates go back down, that's when I use energy. So I charge my cars, I operate my 3D printer factory, all at low nighttime rates. So that big peak that we have at night, that's also me. So knowing that this is bad for the grid, why would I do that? Well, it's because I'm financially incentivized to do that right now. That's the game that we're playing. That's the rules that were set. So we just play the game under the current rules. So as more and more solar gets added to the grid, this imbalance between storage and solar is just gonna get worse. And since a lot of solar customers pay very low monthly bills, someone has to pay those price difference and it ends up being the non-solar customers. And a lot of people feel like that's not fair. Now keep in mind that the non-solar customers are getting a benefit from the solar that these customers have installed also. They get cleaner generation, they get cleaner air as a result. So it's not like the solar customers should front all of this money. It's going to be a thing that we have to pay for together. It's really just a question of what is the fair way to do that. But I think we can all agree that there is a technical problem here in this imbalance that needs to be solved. And the utilities have a few levers that they can pull to go about that. The first that we've already seen to some extent is shifting the hours that they pay time of use rates. So in the current situation, they're paying higher rates when solar is still producing. They can shift those hours later and later until they end up being at night. We can be completely reversed from where we are now. The lowest rates will be during the day when solar's out, the highest rates will be at night when it's not. For me personally, with a power wall, I can just shift my schedule. I can use as much energy during the day as I can, store as much as I can, and then not use it at night and run the house off of the power wall. But for customers without storage and with solar only, that's going to completely upend the financial benefits of their system. This is a system that they installed years ago under different rules, and now they're changing on them. And that's not really fair. Another lever the utilities could pull is the way that they bill us for energy. We currently get billed by the kilowatt hour, which kind of makes intuitive sense. You use more energy, you pay more energy. But that's not realistic to the cost of generating that electricity. Like I said before, with the power plants, there's a cost to build them and maintain them and pay employees for them. And really the only thing that changes when you don't use electricity is fuel costs go down. So if they change our bills to be more representative of that, it would be like a third is the cost of transmitting the energy. A third of it is generating it. And then a third of it is the actual cost for fuel. So if you used no electricity, you would still pay two thirds of your normal bill, or at least the average bill for everybody. So that doesn't really work well either. Another thing that's being proposed right now is minimum monthly bills just for solar owners. That could be anywhere from 50 to $100 a month that every solar owner just has to pay. And that in a lot of cases is as much or more than their bill was before they got solar. So now they're buying a solar system and they're still paying the same amount of money. Doesn't really seem fair either. There's actually an assembly bill right now in California, AB 1139, that's trying to do all of these things. And as it's written, it's probably not gonna pass, but these kind of things are coming. This is a real problem that we're gonna have to figure out how to solve. And we have to do it in a way that works for everyone. So do you see the trick that Tesla's pulling here? All of these proposed changes apply to solar customers. Solar customers are ones who've signed an interconnection agreement with the utility to be able to export power back onto the grid. 
Tesla's changing that. If you don't export power back onto the grid, in the utility's eyes, you're not a solar customer. You're just a customer who happens to have a little power plant in his house, and that power plant keeps everything self-contained, and you use less energy from the grid. So these changes no longer apply. So Tesla's looking at these changes that are being proposed, especially those minimum monthly bills. And they say, you know what? We don't have to do that if we're not a solar customer. So there you go. Don't export. I'm just a regular utility customer who uses less energy. So in this current world of solar, with exports being paid at retail rates, yeah, Tesla's change sounds crazy. It sounds like they're killing solar. But under these proposed changes, it's probably the best way to save it. So clearly, we have a problem. We have way less energy storage than solar on the grid. It's debatable how much of a problem that currently is and what the right way to handle it is, but I think we can agree that it is a problem that we need to solve. Utilities are working on various ways of doing energy storage. There are some big battery power plants that are being installed right now. Tesla's pushing us towards having power walls in our houses. And that actually has the additional benefit of being a whole house backup. And people in California who've been through recent wildfires and people in Texas who went through the blizzard, they can tell you how much value that can add to an installation. So personally, I'd rather have the power wall in my garage rather than use the utilities somewhere out there on the grid. But like I said, these changes aren't in place yet. So maybe Tesla's change is a little bit premature, but I think at this point, those changes are inevitable and it's probably our best choice moving forward. I really hope we can ultimately reach a compromise where say people who currently have solar are grandfathered into these existing plans. That way it respects the investment that they made earlier and gets them that payback that they expected when they made that choice to do it. But for people moving forward, storage is probably gonna be a required part of the equation. I'd like to see the situation where we're given a choice. You can install solar with energy storage or you're given a choice to rent energy storage from the utility. That may be something local to your house that you rent or it could be, you know, utility scale storage that you are paying your contribution to use as part of your solar installation. I don't know what that cost would be, but I would hope that it would be something that would equally share that cost with the people who have solar, who are benefiting from it, and the people who don't have solar, who are benefiting from it. Changing from a fossil fuel dinosaur burning grid to a renewable energy grid is going to cost more for all of the customers. And I hope we can find a way to do that that is fair for everyone. So that's it. I know this is a really complicated topic and there are sides to it that I didn't even touch on. So leave us your questions in the comments. If you have questions that we need Yvonne's help to answer with her solar industry expertise, we'll come back with a follow-up video and we can answer those questions. Also, let me know what you think about this idea of renting storage or paying some monthly fee towards storage for solar customers. I think it could work out pretty well, but I'd like to know what you guys think too. If you're looking for Tesla Solar, it would be great if you would use my referral code down in the description. But otherwise, thanks for watching.